All right. I believe we are live on both pages. Good evening. Happy Thursday. Let me just double check. There we all good over here. I don't know why I always get some why I do that in the high pitch voice. Yes, it looks like we're good. Let's pause the Spotify. Don't want to get any violations for playing music that's not mine. Okay. I don't know why. I don't think I need that. I can just turn that down. Oh, too low here. Let's actually shut that down. Get that off the internet. Do, 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 do. So my resolution is low on a couple of I both my devices running. That's probably why I'm working on that. So if my resolution is low on one of them. That would be why. Okay, I'm live over here on Facebook. I gotta share this out. Alright, there's that to the author. Send that to everyone. Do, 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 do. All right. I think that's about enough. Send out to a bunch of people. If you guys get this notification, you see this video, and you don't want me to send it to you in future reference, let me know. Um, I'm trying to wait here. Oh, looks like I contacted someone with auto response. Do, 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 do. Give it a few minutes. I am waiting for something first to make sure. Actually, you know what? I'm just waiting, waiting. Today is the Therapeutic Thursday is what we're live for. Is Therapeutic Thursday tonight, guys. It is the 29th of February. It is a leap year. We are live on a day that won't happen again for four years. How about that? I was actually going to go to my Instagram make sure and see and stuff. I'm waiting to see if uh, we're going to have Shamwine in here. So I can't always see everything from my phone, I feel like. Okay, so I'll be able to see it. I'm just waiting a moment. Waiting because uh, I was hoping Rachel was going to join us. She's, she's going to join us, I'm pretty sure. Just waiting a minute. Well, in case you're just joining us, we are live for Therapeutic Thursday. Therapeutic Thursday live about monsters and poets. I'm Rachel and Miller. Mm -mm. I think I just got a message saying, give me a minute. Let me double check. Oh, I can't see it from there. Okay, hold on. Let's see who that was from. One second, guys. All right. All right. So I'm going to stall here for a few minutes. Uh, so to bring up in the comments. Oh, here. Let me put it in the comments. Put my website. If you don't know my new website already, we have went away from shatteredaddictwriting.com to the website that is in the comments. Um, I don't know how to pin it on here, but on Facebook is pinned. So in the comments, you'll see the... NovaPrintWorks.ca backslash happiness crew. That is where you get all happiness crew shirts, including the new one. Uh, we love crew, you know, or you love crew too, whatever you want to call it, or Valentine's Day shirt. It's got hearts on it. It's lovable. Um, so if you want to get a happiness crew t-shirt, go to that website, hit it up. Uh, they'll send it straight to you. Um, Thank you, Nova Printworks, once again, for uh, Nova Printworks, once again, for printing the Happiness Crew. We really appreciate them. They are amazing. They do awesome work, and they are the best. Let's see if I can over here. I'm gonna comment, try and tag them. At, if you don't follow them, there is Nova Printworks. They're who print all the gear. Um doing a couple things here. Make sure I get as many views as possible, right? Oh, and also, too, 
on both profiles. Thank you, Brody, for putting that in there. And here on Instagram, we have Nova Printworks Official. Thank you, Brody, for showing up tonight. Brody, Brody, Brody. What's up? Hope your night's going good. I mean, I kind of know it is just talk to you, but, you know. Um. So, oh, I was going to say about the stars. So when it comes to stars, on whether it's on this profile, this profile, I'm, I'm you know... What do you call that? Monetized. So if you guys do donate stars, it's going to go to keeping the business going. You know, everything goes to the business, goes to the happiness crew. Um, you know, eventually we get big enough, making enough money. I want to like find a good nonprofit mental health or addiction place to be able to, you know, give a couple percents to, you know, because, you know, it's about helping other people and, you know, resources and stuff. So eventually we'll do something like that. We have a few announcements coming up in the coming week and two. Actually, some really exciting stuff coming over the next uh, couple weeks, which is really cool. We're really growing the brand. We're pushing the happiness crew. And in case you guys see this and are wondering, uh, Shattered Addict Writing is my business. Happiness Crew is a branch of that business. Shattered Addict Writing is like the umbrella over what we do. Um, it's the background noise of everything, and that's why, you know, we have Shattered Addict up here. We have the Happiness Crew down here, and then Therapy Thursday is its own branch, kind of. And then me and my music is kind of a branch off of that. We just keep it. I keep those three separated, so that way, you know, because people sometimes like the shirts, sometimes like the music, sometimes like the motivation and the poetry, you know. So, and I do have books on Amazon as well. And at your local bookstores. Oh, actually, speaking of having books in a store, Rachel and her, her store in Ritzville has my books and t-shirts. So if you ever go through Ritzville, Washington, stop on in at the Ritzville Drug Company. So so there's this week's Therapeutic Thurs edition of Therapeutic Thursday is about Rachel's poem, Monsters and Poets. And if you want, I think you you might have to send me the request. I don't know, let's see here. Oh, here. I'm going to invite you on if you are ready. Come on. There we go. Sometimes my phone's a little soft. Oh, cool. Oh, my gosh. Sorry, I guess I got to pick up the phone. Oh, there we go. Bingo. We got it. All right. There we go. So, I'll give, like, kind of, I guess, an introduction because this is, like, the first time someone's been on. Or second time, but... So tonight, the, today's Therapy Thursday was by Rachel here, called Monsters and Poets. Um, and yeah, so, and she's decided to join us for Therapy Thursday Live and to talk about the poem. Did you want to read the poem or, or would Actually, you mind reading that? <laughs> that would be excellent um, because it's, so I wrote it in 2020 and I really, I sent it to you because you said that you needed a backup, like, or, you know, hey, if anybody has more poems, you know, send them in. And it's like, okay, well, I'll send that one. So I actually haven't read it for a while. <laughs> so it would be probably good to read it. Um, I don't have, I only have it on my phone. Or I could probably pull it up on my computer, maybe. Um, do you have it in front of you? Um, I, I do have it in front. I can. I can have it in front of me real okay. quick. Because my laptop's dead, and I just came from another meeting, and so, uh, oh, damn. yeah, I don't have a copy. <laughs> no, you're totally good. I can read. I mean, I just I just want to make sure, you know what I mean? I mean, I could read it. Yes, that would be if wonderful. Go for it. So, yes. I just, you know, if you're, you know what I mean? So. I do. I know. I wasn't, and I didn't ask you about reading it on live until, like, a little bit ago. Right. Too. You know what I mean? So I, I didn't prepare you for it. So you couldn't be prepared for it, you know, because I didn't think about it. So I was like, oh, wait, I've been reading them because, well, at first I wasn't going to read them because, like, I don't know. I don't want anyone to ever feel like, I don't know. It's just like I'm one of those people. I have to have, ask permission, you know, because it's like using someone's work, you know what I mean? Even though I get I'm it. promoting it for you guys, but I still have to ask permission that I can read it because yeah. I don't want to read it wrongly because some people – I'm sure are going to be picky about their work and be like, no, 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 no. I will read my own poem. You know what I mean? And respectfully so. You know, I get that. So I definitely right. understand that. Uh, no, this was one, I think I wrote it in 2020, maybe it was 2021. I did a lot of writing during the pandemic. And so it was just one that kind of just flowed from me. I think I wrote it in a night or two. And um, 
Yeah, just go ahead and read it, and then we can talk about it after. All right, sounds good. Good. All right, this is Monsters and Poets by Rachel Ann Miller, right? Did I say that right? Yes. I did that right? Got Name it. Right. Okay. All right. Monsters and poets, dancers and dragons, musicians and teachers, laborers and keepers, magicians and leapers, all cry tears upon tears. As you strum, oh, I went, they went to the wrong, dude, don't do that to me. <laughs> Sorry, it went backwards. Okay, Re repeated requests forever denied. Never before has such a truth lied with the one and a billionth first upon the door denied requests are finally granted broken hearts finally replanted drifting off to slumber again recalling notions that you thought recalling notions that you thought me once a foe a river stone poking its head from the stream you avert my gaze as not to stubble upon perch Perchance, I, I don't know if I said that right. Perchance, my name, you skip across the lake, only whispered under the cloak of invisibility. But all is quiet. On the front lines, this piece was not without pain. The glory was not my own, but my brother next to brother next to sister. As I dip my fingerprint from the ink to the page, as you strum the strings that only vibrate in a joyful hum, we, be we begin the story not of the faces you look upon today, but of the ones not yet known. There we go. Did I do wow. that okay? Did I do, did I do okay? That was, that's, I've never read a poem like that before. I feel like when I was reading it earlier, I was like, this is, this is a you know what I mean? This is different. I love it. Like, yeah. It's talking about other things instead of what we usually do. But I still like, feel like it still fits... There's something, something real going on there. There's still a story behind it that has to do with reality, even though you feel like you're you're bringing back to like old times, especially the way she put the photo. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. No. I, and I love the photo that was used for it. Uh, that looks great. It looks amazing. Um, no, you actually reading it back to me. I'm thinking. I'm like, wow. There's a lot in there. I put a lot. In <laughs> um and it does mostly the way i write is very you know it's it's you can kind of put your own syncopation to it your own interpretation um a lot of it had to do just in the basic bottom line was um you know since we went through the pandemic and everything it was kind of the transition era uh -huh. of there were so many things that were you know oh this is true oh now this is true Oh, don't pay attention to that because uh, we don't want to talk about that because that's actually true, but we don't want you to know about it. It's just there was a lot of confusion. And mm -hmm. oh, yeah. so when I write, I typically just write from how I feel about a situation mm -hmm. and put my own words to it. I, it may not even perfectly make sense to me even when I'm writing it. Um, but it was just kind of the turmoil of emotions that came out. Um, Especially since, you know, um, your shattered addict writing, like that's kind of how it came to me in, in a sense is just, it's fractured. It's yeah. fractured feelings yeah. and um, sometimes kind of fractured words. There is a flow to it. Um, and then, you know, every time you read it, it's kind of, you might pick something else out to apply to, you know, it, it, that reading that now applies even a little differently than it would like a year ago mm -hmm. reading it five years ahead oh, yeah. it might apply differently and it'll apply differently to me more than or as it will to you so that's mm -hmm. kind of my writing um it's just these words that come together they flow um in my head and right. they may not for some people right no it it happens uh and but like with this actually you know you're, you're talking about that and the pandemic it made me realize like the end of the poem you know here where's where does it go so we begin the story not of the faces you look upon today but the ones not yet known like it almost is like you look at all of it in the beginning you're talking about all these things monsters poets dancers dragons it's like there's all the, we all have these labels like in life like before 2020 i mean you know there's a lot of like you know you work at a grocery store, so you must not wanted to do much with your life. You know what I mean? You, you kind of type thing, you work fast food, but really that is a career for some people. So it's like you take all these titles at 2020 that crushed all those titles because CEO no longer matter because they're either working at home or they're fired right now because the pandemic. 
You know what I mean? There's a lot of people that lost their jobs that were like in, you know, the suity wearing people that make tons of money got laid off. You know what I mean? When us, Wal like I, like everyone knows I work at Walmart. Hopefully they don't get in trouble for saying that. But you know what I mean? I, I didn't stop working. You know what I mean? I, you know, it made people that were undervalued more value to some in, in some aspect of society you know what i mean so i kind of that's what i when you're explaining i was like that's kind of what it feels like we all have these titles we all like i felt one way about life like you know because before the pandemic i was like what am i doing with my life like i'm jumping from fast food to fast food to retail like what am i really doing i mean of course i was using here and there off and on but mm -hmm. you know like what am i really doing that always stuck in my head i've always had a sense of like you know wanting to be more mm -hmm. And then the pandemic hit and it all made it to where my job was more important than what I thought my friend from high school was doing. I was like doing amazing. Oh, yeah. And then now they're unemployed yeah. and I'm, I'm working 60, 80 hours a week just to try and keep, I mean, as long as the product was there, we could stock it. Oh, yeah. Sometimes we, oh, didn't, we had to go home early because there was no product to stock and stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, it makes sense that you wrote that in the pandemic. Because it, it is, it kind of reminds me of we're all here and then we're all, it doesn't matter who you are, what you do, you get one life. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that was the realization of 2020 for yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. 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 You're absolutely right. And it, it's, you know, the thing that I keep coming back around to is we're still such in such a time of transition. Like there was the pandemic and now we're in this time. And I think right around when I wrote it, it was like 21 I don't know. I'll have to check. But mm -hmm. now we're in such a time of transition to where those people that were up here aren't up here anymore. Mm -hmm. And the people down here, in a sense, are carrying the nation, literally. Yeah. And uh, there's so much. It really, this is a time that shows the character of people. You know, like those people, 100%. they were labeled addicts. <laughs> and it's like, oh, you're just yeah. nothing. You're, just, you're, you're a taker. That's all you do is mm -hmm. take. This is the time of going, hey, this is our character. This is what we believe in. And we're not doing this for us and for our glory, but there is a next generation mm -hmm. that we are doing this for. And the proof is in the pudding and time will tell. And that's, that's kind of my whole motivation behind my writing is just, you know, this is, it's not for us. It's not for our glory, but uh, what is will show itself, you know, mm -hmm. in, in people. Thank uh, the true character yep. people will show themselves. I really feel that. I really like it. Really shows how people are and what they. I don't know. Twenty twenty. Yeah, it did. Like, I don't want to. I started to think about like I'm not trying to go political. Uh, it <laughs> it changed a lot. And, like in the aspect of world and how we view a lot of things. Like, and it's crazy. And honestly, but I feel like this is my opinion. I feel like it didn't change enough though. You know what I mean? Like, for some reason, like, okay, here's my outlook on some things, right? Like, just on that, I'm like, we have all these choices. Like, you go get body wash. You know how many choices of body wash there are? I thought 2020 was really going to start limiting things and showing us how to, because people are always worried about the end of the world. But now we got 200 more choices than we did before 2020. But, yeah, we're wasting all this stuff. You know, I don't want to get too into that. But you get what I mean? I'm like, so I just, I feel like it changed a lot. And it showed a lot of character. And that's the main thing it did, which shows who who's real. Especially because, you know, there's some of the, our idols that we've looked up to for years. And, you know, there's still stuff coming out about certain things. I, like I said, I don't want to get too into that. But, you know, like, it makes you wonder how much has been lied to. Like, I grew up in the 90s. You know, and there wasn't a lot of information. You couldn't share information across the world like you can these days. So I feel like, was it the fact that we couldn't share information? Or did we all just come to a realization in 2020, like, holy crap, this is our life, really? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, does it help me appreciate life a lot more, too? And mm -hmm. focus on the right things, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, I definitely do understand that. That's... <laughs> Yeah, um, I definitely appreciate life more, and um, the things that I value have changed a little bit, um, and just you know, and the relationships. That's a big one. I think it's the relationships. You kind of find out who's true and who's real. Because mm -hmm. I did, I found out who's real, who's I, who I did too. Cares. Yeah. I had some instances like that too. Like that's another. That's another. That's like for a whole four-hour podcast series or something. <laughs> um, no, I really did, and it, 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 you know, 
you realize, and I think with getting older too, because you know, I've realized over the last couple of years, because being you know being an ex addict, I feel like I didn't grow up for a while until I hit my like mid, like early thirties here when I started doing this and started yeah. realizing more. You know, um, it makes you realize who you want to spend your time with. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And yeah. and I know twenty twenty, I've always had an issue with mortality since my mom died when I was young, but you know twenty twenty really brought that perspective. And there's some even family members I cut off because they weren't helpful to my healing. And that, you know, and here's the thing, here's what's crazy is, and this is more, it's supposed to be more about you than me. Uh, <laughs> if it wasn't for 2020 and the pandemic, you we, we wouldn't be sitting here. I don't know if we'd be sitting here. That, the pandemic yeah. is what birthed shattered addict writing and shared thoughts of addicts. Mind my first book. If it wasn't for the pandemic, I wouldn't realize my purpose, I feel like. Or maybe, not now I'm chilling. Uh, or maybe I would have. I don't know. But point mm -hmm. being is like that we wouldn't be sitting here today on this conversation, most likely, if it wasn't for the pandemic. So even though it, it sucked, I feel like uh, there's necessary things that happen to make evolution of humanity, mm -hmm. you know? If that makes sense, evolution. <laughs> is that even a word? It's a, it's a, word, a word now. It is now. Let's do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and really, and... Like, so even though it sucked to happen, I think it was good in some aspects. Yeah, it, it was like a clearinghouse kind of, I, I, that's how I see it. I mean, it, it really just mm -hmm. kind of cleared the table because um, we've, we've become, we became so reliant on, um, honestly, people feeding us stuff that what doesn't, it didn't even exist. It was just this total right. facade. And exactly. I think that's I, that's the great thing about the era that we're entering into is that mm -hmm. facade is gone. Now it still yeah. exists for some people, and it will exist for other people's whole lives. Mm -hmm. But for certain people, especially the ones that really were on rock bottom and who already kind of soft stuff anyway, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know that we could because yeah, when when you've got nothing to lose, it's kind of easier to see things clearly. I think yeah. Um, so it's just now we're kind of at this point where it's like, you know, a lot of people are going through a massive withdrawal from the culture mm -hmm. that they mm -hmm. were versed in. And we're like, yeah, oh, yeah, we've been there. We, we, know, we know we got this. Yep. We've, we've been we've known this for a long time. And it's just, you know, it's time to step up and go. All right. Now, what do we do about it? Like, we are the leaders of tomorrow and doing this kind of stuff. Yeah. We're not the leaders of tomorrow. We're the leaders of today, preparing the way for the leaders of tomorrow. And so doing this kind of stuff, doing the Instagram and the Facebook lives and talking about communicating, mm -hmm. leading the way in the new communication is literally what our jobs are now as, you know, these citizens in the new era. And I think it's cool. Awesome. I think it's great. I think it's awesome. And that's why I love what you mm -hmm. do. That's why I love what you started you. with Shattered Out Writing. <laughs> that's why I, uh, Happiness Crew, I'm totally behind it because the message is spot on mm -hmm. with what it needs to be. Exactly. And that's why, like, um, that's why it comes on poetry. I was going to ask you, uh, what, like, okay, so you've, you've expressed that poetry is just, you, it's one of your late, your languages, so mm -hmm. to speak. So like, what made you start writing it? Did, it, did you, have you always wrote poetry or is there like a certain instant that like, Hey, I want to write some poetry or, you know, what, what brought you into it? I guess just, um, you know, so I have, I started writing poetry when I was a teenager and Honestly, back then it was much more structured. Like you know, this rhymes with this, and yeah. this rhymes with this. Um, and I still do some of that. But um, yeah, so I, I, I wrote when I was a teenager, and a lot of it was just like any teenager, an outlet for my feelings. It's like I feel this way, and I need to get it out. And you know, I wasn't musical necessarily, and so it came out in poetry instead of songwriting. Oh, nice. um, and I've also also been on social media since I was 16 years old. And so, you know, I, I've never pursued a following. I've more just been mm -hmm. curious about what social media is. And because this is a whole, it's part of the new era. It's like, we've never had mm -hmm. this before. And so I've just kind of kept this track record over the several years that I've been alive, you know, since 16 um, on Facebook. And then when Instagram came around, mm -hmm. Instagram and you know, sometimes I'll just, I'll get an inkling um, or a wave of motion and I'll just write and I'll write directly on Facebook. Right. Let's just write something. And then, you know, it's my own personal blog or blog or whatever you want to call it. Um, 
And so, yeah, a lot of my poetry has just, it's come, it's just, it's, it's the best way to articulate um, what I feel, um, especially after coming from addiction. It's, uh, I've learned to dissociate in many different ways, <laughs> you know? <Right. laughs> oh yeah. yeah. And so, that. so sometimes when I can't identify, it's like, okay, I know there's a root to this, but my mind won't let me, you know, get in touch mm -hmm. with it. And um, so poetry was one of the more healthier ways that I dealt with that. It was, it was instead of running to something damaging, I kind of mm -hmm. ran to it. To, it was a, a way to get out of motion with really identifying like where the pain was coming from. So that's good. That's kind of what I was, I was getting at, you know, like that's good. Like not everyone has to put their poetry out there, right. For everyone to see, like it could just be fulfilling for your own journal and like that, but that's why I did this is for, you know, people to have a platform, right. Like to do that. And, but I also want people to know and hear it from other people that like, you don't have to, write for any reason writing is a very good outlet for mental health um yes. you know and it helps me a lot my mental health but i want other you know want other people to know that like like you know we write for it doesn't have to be you don't have to put on facebook instagram i guess is what i'm getting at you don't have no. to have a following but um the fact that you do when you do get that because sometimes when it comes to friends like i have i have friends here don't get me wrong but like <laughs> i have a lot more people that pay attention to my stuff online you know so, so for some people that's all they have so you know when they do put it out there you know that that that's cool that they do that because they use that as a support system but you know i guess i guess kind of what i'm getting at is like put your poetry out there don't be afraid to do it you know what i mean you know like mm -hmm. like what we're doing this is i guess this is this is towards the audience you know anyone that's out there that sees us doing this like put your poetry out there you know you got people like us out here to help you know and it's a good way to get your feelings out and even if you don't just put it out there it's a good way to still get your feelings out and help you understand the better, I feel like. Because I don't know about you, but when I write something, what, what I'm going through, and I reread it, it just it puts it more in perspective. Yeah. Of, of like, no. if that makes sense. It can re you can read it and then go like, oh, that is how I'm feeling. I didn't realize this when I was writing it, but now that I'm reading it, I understand so much more about what I'm going through. And... Uh, yeah, no, it is. It's important to read your own po poetry. There's still stuff that I ha I've written and I haven't gone back and read oh, I, yeah. because it was written out of so much pain that I'm like, yeah, that needs to be put in a box and put away. For a while. Right? You know, like, but I don't want to unlock that character again. Let's put that exactly, away. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. But writing is so healthy. It really is. And, you know, having somebody else hear it is healthy too like mm -hmm. because so many times we we try to get out or have a conversation or even go to therapy and there's things that we just um we can't communicate that are in us and um, um a lot of people we've been obsessed especially as we were talking about our culture before the pandemic we've been so obsessed uh, about our reputation and how we appear to other people mm -hmm. you know oh, well, what will they think of me if they're going to think I'm nuts. They're going to think I'm super cringy. <laughs> they're going to be like, oh, I'm really? I, I understand that 100%. And yes, that does have value to a degree, but it is more important, like people's lives and people's relationships and who they are as a person in here is way more important than what somebody thinks of you out here. And so that's, like I said, that's why I, I do this on social media and whatnot is the real stuff. When it comes down to it, the reputation doesn't matter. The image doesn't matter. It is being able to relate to people that are going through the same thing and that are afraid mm -hmm. to share what's in them because they don't know how to share it. So yes, mm -hmm. write your poetry, write whatever it is, even if it's not like this poem that I wrote, it's not syncopated. It's not, you know, it's a free verse poem exactly. writing. Um, just, just get it out there and more people, um, I think there's going to be more and more people that truly are empathetic with people's writings, mm -hmm. even if there's a lot of people that are judgmental still. Oh, yeah. So. No, straight up. Like, and also with that, putting yourself out there, be careful. You know, don't read into comments. You know, that's one thing I will give advice to anyone that puts their stuff out there. Read, you're going to read the comments. You're going to, everyone does it. I wouldn't say don't read them because that's impossible. I mean, we're all addicted. You know what I mean? So it's hard.
hard to say, you know, not going to read them at all. But when you read the, the mean ones, just put them aside. Don't respond. The best thing is not to respond. I mean, there are some, I ain't going to lie, sometimes I have to be a smartass, like bad. And just to be, just because I'm sarcastic. But, you know, at the same time, you, if you can't handle that, then don't respond. Because most time they're just trolls hating themselves in their mom's basement, you know, typing some hate comments, you know, <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I've always heard that before. Like trolls are just people in their mom's basements that are mad at people. And, you know, it, essentially it could be, you never know, you know, but don't, don't read into that. Like I, I've, I have, I actually have quite a few friends that have, that get more hate comments than they do good comments and it, it sucks. But they, but they know how to handle them, which is good. And they've learned how to handle them. And with That's mental awesome. health, you got to learn how to handle social media and mental health and take your breaks too, you know. Yes. Um, yes. That is very important. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. And that's another thing is like confidence has a lot to do with it. Um, and that's something that's something that, that I think can be learned. Um, some people are just born with it. But um, there's it's I think it's it's it's, it's what am I trying to say? It, it is such an important factor, I think, to encourage people um, yeah. is confidence. It's like, like there's, I mean, one of the main, main things I think that people that are dealing with depression or people that fall into depression is they lose their confidence and, and or they, they don't have confidence. Um, yeah. They have they let in, insecurity take over. And I think if you have, have confidence in, you know yourself or you have somebody that's always building confidence up in you and reassuring you you know there's a lot of people that are like you know oh well i can't just you know baby them their whole life or you know what uh, um building up confidence in somebody is essential to their mental health like it truly is it comes down to that i don't remember where that came from and what you were saying but that's yeah that's what it brought no it happened like yeah, there's a difference between, but there is a difference between babying and building confidence. You know what I mean? Like some people just don't understand the difference. I feel like that because you mentioned right. that. But building confidence, yeah, like no, I like my boys. I tell them I'm supporting them in everything they do, no matter what. Because here's the thing: when I was younger, I was told I had to cut my hair a certain way. Now I have ponytail, I have purple hair. I'm 36 years old. I dye my hair. I do whatever I want. And I feel like that is because when I was younger, I was told I could dress a certain way, have my hair a certain way, do things a certain way. I didn't write, I didn't do this till I was 30 because I thought, you know, everyone was right, mm -hmm. you know, and that wasn't building confidence in me. And here's the thing, even out of my last marriage, like I was a, like a shrivel up, you know, shell of a man um, because I, she, she did a lot of the things that I didn't know how to do, you know, and it took me time to learn that. So, you know, you're right about the what, what I'm getting at is you're right about that confidence is is sometimes you got to build it, you know, and sometimes it gets broken, but you got to build it and you got to mm -hmm. find ways to build it. And sometimes you don't have that person. You either go find that person. <laughs> you tell them to give you confidence or you just you somehow <laughs> you just push forward until you find your audience. You know what I mean? Right. Because, right. you know, I even though I was still kind of using off and on when I met my wife now i found that person that would back me and do anything anything you know mm -hmm. what i mean and now and now we're doing this you know right. and because she backs me like she's out there with the kids they're driving her crazy probably but she's out there with the kids because she knows how important this is so you know you're right about that it's it's good to have someone there to help build you up and it sucks when you don't have someone right. does that that doesn't mean give up that just keep pushing you know what i mean i actually have a friend that's kind of going through a similar situation right now okay. so it's kind of perfect that we talked about this i didn't even try to even go on that topic i wasn't yeah. even trying to yeah. um but it's <laughs> funny how that works it is. you know it, you know i feel like i feel like god universe divine whatever it is anyone believes in on here you know i call it god but you know he puts the things in your life when you need to hear them and especially like social media like i really feel like i know they listen to us or whatever but i feel like sometimes those messages come from him because i sometimes see the right video at the right time like i'm depressed and down and like now i'm better you know i mean some people see these at the right time and it makes them feel better yeah. so just you know and also, too, that that's important, too, to build a relationship with something greater than you. Yeah. So that way you have something to believe in because some I, there's times where I was lost of no one, and that's the only thing that got me through. Even though I was mad at it a lot of the time, 
it still was the only thing that got me through is there's got to be a point to this. You know what I mean? Yeah. There had to be a point to it. And sure yeah. enough, all the suffering and stuff, there was a point. I that's mean, you know, now I don't suffer nearly as bad as I used to. Maybe broke here and there, but that's about it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> just normal. We live in an expensive world. Oh, know? we do. But, yeah, but we're survivors. See? Yes, so exactly. So know how to function broke. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, I didn't want to touch back on on the structure yeah. thing and she, she had a very good point on that guys like if you're writing poetry don't care about structure like if you've been taught like i was taught structure and for a while i didn't write because i was like i don't remember the structure i don't remember this it don't matter just write your feelings on a page you'll pick up half the poem books in a store and they have a little paragraph <laughs> on a part of a page and that rest of the page is blank guys so that poetry is anything these days so but no i really enjoy this i really enjoyed this poem because it's different and everything else you still feel real life in it right but it feels like it's taking you s somewhere else which that's what i really lo really loved about it well yeah you're absolutely right and that's something i wanted to add to is mm -hmm. um there is stuff when i write there like i said with what i've de dealt with in the past I, I dealt with disassociation too so sometimes when i write i feel like it's for someone else like i'm like okay you know what I'm feeling this right now, and I know I don't know the time or place that this is meant for, but I feel like I need to write it and I need to put it out there. And if somebody connects to it down the road, you know, there's just certain things where I'm like, I don't feel like this is for me. Like, I'm not connecting to it emotionally. And maybe it is for me, but it's for me way down the road. Yeah. So, you know, there's things that I think our emotions speak that our minds can't comprehend. You know, we're talking about God or the higher power. Yeah. Like, it, a lot of it comes, you know, all through the heart center. Mm -hmm. And so what is it here has its own language. It's just, you know, we have several different ways of putting it out, poetry, mm -hmm. music, movies, like there is, art is wonderful because it speaks something that, you know, our logical minds can't always understand. Yep, 100%, I agree with that. And, and in a language, sometimes we don't even understand until we write it down and then we read it later. And then we're like, oh, hey. Right, right, right. So, um, yeah, cool. Is there anything else you want to? Add? I don't really have. I don't really have like a list of questions. I don't want to. <laughs> no. I is just there anything else you, you, you want to add? You, yeah, I well, usually go. Oh, I I usually go about a half hour. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I don't have set time for this yet. So I just. I wasn't sure. I don't want to. You know. How long have we been going? Uh, uh it's like thirty-seven minutes oh. now. So. Really? It's been that I long? Just, oh, wow. Yeah, it, yeah, it has been. Uh, I'm surprised okay. too. I looked over, I'm like, dang. Um, but no, I just didn't know. Is there anything else you wanted to add? I don't have any other questions. Um, um, no, I mean, I was just, uh, I, well, I've seen you do a couple of these, and then I, I saw that you use my poems. So I was like, yeah, I definitely want to jump on with you. Um, but I don't have anything else to add. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm planning on writing more in the future. Um, I don't quite know what. Um, right now I'm helping produce a play out here in Ritzville, Treasure Island. So that's mm -hmm. taking up most of my time. <laughs> uh, yeah, I saw that. I was, I, I, honestly, I was busy that day. I almost came and like, did, but I was like, dude, with everything going on right now, I don't have time to come out and actually like spend multiple times doing it yeah. like right now. But I was like, eventually yeah. some point you do something like that. I want to come out and do it. Cause get, I need to get on stage a little bit and just get that fear of the stage out of the way a little bit. There you go. But, there it's great it's wonderful it so if you do that do you do you, do you guys do plays very often or this is our first. this okay. is i grew up doing theater but out here in ritzville this is our first they used to do uh had a, a dinner theater group years ago but um again after the pandemic there there was uh it shut down pretty much everything so this is the hmm. first thing that we're getting going um and it's kind of just feeling out how people you know how many people want to be involved uh we have a cast now about gosh i think it's like 15 it's not huge um it, i mean main parts um but yeah we're just feeling it out see how it's going see how much their interest is but uh there will be a, it will be a dinner theater and it'll be in april so i'll definitely you know post those dates yes. for people yes. who want to come see it we'll share it we'll share it too on here too on shadow writing get you know help get it out okay. there you know yeah. awesome so, because people can drive from here right over there to come watch it. i mean it's not people go to the gorge from here you know right try and right. help us <laughs> a little bit you know see what happens <laughs> and, and it definitely we're available we'll, we'll definitely come to it too awesome. it'd be nice to, i've never been to a play before that'd be cool Seriously? Oh, um, wow. 
Yeah. So I have a question for you real quick. Yeah. And then uh, we'll probably get off here. <laughs> but now, because you said some of the theater. Now, Ritzville is a small community. I don't know how things are with, like, drugs there, right? I know I'm here in Moses. Everywhere has right, a problem, right. I'm sure. But how important is something like that? Not just, I don't know, is it youth and young adult, or is it just adults, like, or who's doing the play? Is it just oh, adults? Okay. Or? So, uh, it is. It is a mix, right. actually. It's uh, kids and adults, yeah. Oh, okay. So, like, but, so that's what I'm getting at. How important for a small community is it to have these extracurricular activities to keep the kids and young adults busy? Like, how important is that? How, I mean, that's a very important thing, right? I mean, you, especially in a community like that, you right? Just, you just touched on it. You just said it. That is the main, one of the biggest reasons we are even doing this is to have an outlet that you don't have to pay for that can get you interacting with other kids and mentors mm -hmm. um it is and, and you know learn a new skill because a lot of people haven't done theater um but that is one of the biggest reasons we're doing something like this is to have to to keep kids because these are their inside playing video games or they're outside destroying stuff. yeah <laughs> we've had a few issues um, and then that escalates to other things. Um, you know, we have had some drug issues. Um, our, you know, we have a great police force, great sheriff's department here. Um, but you know, they, you can't stop everything yeah. and there needs to be the possible. And theater is such a great outlet for that. It really does build confidence. It builds communication mm -hmm. for, how, you know, kids that want to talk about stuff that don't know how it is an amazing outlet so that is one of the main reasons we're doing that and and that's having kids and adults we have mentors as well that's awesome yeah. that's that's <laughs> that thank you for doing that that's awesome and that's that's all it takes you know is stepping up and doing some extra stuff like that in the community and that's why we do this here for sure right i i do sometimes go to events i mean i was going to events with the happiness crew merch but the kind of events i was getting into were like the sip and strolls and the bruise and okay. tunes and honestly like I love them. I made money at a couple of them. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, it's not about the money either. But at the same time, you know, I made money, but I just was like, um, I, I'm at alcohol events. I'm right. more about recovery. You know what I mean? Like, right. I, you, you know, if you don't get me wrong, though, if you're drinking a beer at night or a glass of wine, I'm not going to judge you. There's people in recovery that don't do drugs that have a, a drink here and there, and I'm not going to judge that either. We accept all forms, mm -hmm. but promoting the happiness crew, which is more family-based, I feel like should be more family-based at those events just wasn't, wasn't right. So, but I feel that, but I'm trying to learn how to get more involved in the community down here too, um, because it's what you got to do. You're right. You know, yeah. because yeah. if we want to save the kids, we, if we want to save our future or our kids' future, we got to help them understand the importance of not doing drugs and, you know, keep them busy, you know, finding yeah. hobbies, finding stuff that keeps them busy. That's not just video games because video games, they can be fun, but in moderation, like anything. <laughs> it can be another addiction as well. It's oh, yeah, <laughs> no. I, we, we, and here's, here's the thing. That's just what I'll in, in that part on the addiction and, and inside on is when it comes to addiction, we live in an addicted world, and that's why I created the Happiness Crew as a support group, too, when it comes to that, because I'm not an NA and aa -er, you know, I'm Cali sober, which, you know, kicks me out of that group, but also I take depression medication, so I don't think they'd even allow that there. I don't know how that all works know. anymore. Point being, if you're in AAA, I love you. If you're not, I love you, too. We support and we accept everyone in this group, no matter where you're at in life. And that's why we're doing this, is to help the communities around us and hopefully globally one day. You know, we'll get there. So, oh, shit. I just knocked over my ring light. <laughs> all right. I think that is a good thing good to end on. Way I go. was waiting for that to happen. I was waiting for it to fall. All right. <laughs> well, thank you, Rachel, okay. for submitting your poem. We look forward to more poetry. And then everyone watching will be here again next week, 7 o'clock, same time. Thank you again for coming on. I really love this. I'm going to cut up some clips awesome. and, and awesome. post them. Awesome. I love it. All right. You, you have a good night. All right.